Yegu mi ko, kitsa asutta magio ng kamam skutin. Yegu mi no ko kitsa tao skog ng kamam skumaog. I will talk about the treaties and the women that were involved um, at the time of treaty making. These women were called Okitsa Tao In the Treaty 6 territory, when the treaty making was happening, it was a very, very powerful time. The women have authority over the land. But when they tried to talk to the treaty commissioner about the land, the treaty commissioner wouldn't speak to the women because the Europeans at that time um, did not speak to the women. So the women stayed in the background. There was a particular group of women called Okitsitao Skok. There is no English word to describe these women. The closest terminology is um, clan mothers, warrior women. These women were the law keepers of the Cree nation, the Nihio uh, Aisinoak. And there was nine of them, nine very powerfully gifted women. And at the time when treaty was being made, there was many ceremonies happening because it was not an easy decision. It was not a very, it was not an easy thing that the Cree people were going into. And they knew this. They knew that the land was going to be shared with the European people. So they talked about it and there was ceremony being done. There was a particular ceremony that was done. It was in the lodge of the women. And in that ceremony, there was four spirits that came in, and those spirits told the Nihioak what to do, how to direct the discussions with the Europeans. And it was in this lodge that the spirit keepers came in. And there was four of them. They said, the first spirit keeper that came in was the sun. The sun said, Niuma pisim, niuma kichoskapius, nienga piso iti niego nohe asuttamagiuna, kichasuttamagiunuma. I am the sun. I am the most profound of helpers to the Creator. And I will bear witness to this exchange, is what the Son said in that ceremony. And then the second spirit keeper that came in there was the water. And uh, that spirit keeper said, Nista, Nistanga pi sawiti ni aguma, kichosutamagyun. And the spirit keeper said, I am the water. I've come, I will come to bear witness to this exchange as well. Nista, he said. And then the third spirit keeper that came in there is Muskosi. The Muskosi is the grass spirit, he said. I too will bear witness to this exchange, this most profound of exchanges, I will come to bear witness to it. And then the fourth spirit keeper that came in there was Xiniosni. Xiniosni said, I will seal this covenant. Xiniosni is the grandfather rock. And this is where our, our pipes are. It was the pipe that sealed this covenant, this treaty. And after 
uh, the spirit keepers spoke and committed to bear witness to this exchange. It was the women that spoke about the land and what it is that they wanted to leave for the generations to come. The Ugitsitao school had a ceremony and they knew, they knew that there was things coming that would affect the generations to come, how it would affect the land, and that the freedom of my people would be diminished. And the women spoke about this in that lodge. So, wa hiyawigi tapcik ugi skok. The women's compassion was so profound. I kohki ki siwatsitsik yagun gogi skok. I gi mahtaunig uksiwatson. Their compassion was so sacred that they were able to see into the generations to come that they wanted to leave. The children not born yet, they wanted to leave them something. So they said, we will share the land. So they made treaty entitlements, treaty agreements, treaty understandings that the children would live off the land through agriculture. This is, this agriculture is to benefit the generations to come. And this is what the women decided. So the treaty entitlement to agriculture is very significant. That one square mile per family of five is very significant as well. That is still yet to be implemented, to be utilized by the treaty people. And I hope for the future that that will begin to be revitalized because that is our treaty inheritance. That is what those women willed for the generations so that they would live off of the land in a new way because they understood that the buffalo were gone, they've diminished, and that the land would be shared. And this is how profound these women were, very gifted, very gifted women. And that is what I'll leave you with.